हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू तरुण आयस टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग डेली करंट अफेयर्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ ऑफ नवंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट न्यूज ऑफ द डे द फर्स्ट न्यूज ऑफ द डे इज अबाउट द कुटिया कोंड ट्राइब द कुटिया कोंड ट्राइब इज फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ उड़ीसा और राइट सो नाउ लेट एस सी दैट वाई दिस ट्राइब वॉज इन न्यूज मिलेट्स as we had discussed in one of our editorial that uh, that the year 2023 23 has been declared as the international year for millets by united nation general assembly so in the context of pro, uh, promoting millets there has been a there has been a people's movement that has been built around the barlang the barlang yatra which is a traditional festival of the kutia kond tribe right now kutia kond tribe is one of the primitive sections of the kond tribe and kond tribe is the tribe which lives on the hill top and valleys in the state of urissa particularly they are found in the uh, in the district of kalahandi and kandamal of urissa the kutia kond tribes they are particularly vulnerable tribes now when we speak of the pvtgs now what happens in the in 1970s there was a commi- uh, commission that was established under the chairman chairmanship of chairmanship of debar now what happened the debar commission had recommended that some of the communities some of the tribal sections they are highly vulnerable or they are particularly vulnerable so therefore they were identified and they were a new category was a new category was formed by the name of particularly vulnerable tribes pvtgs there are total 75 pvtgs as recognized by the debar commission and the maximum of the pvtgs they are found in the and the maximum tribes they are found in the state of state of odisha so therefore this kutia kon tribes they belong to the particularly vulnerable tribes right so they have the nature worship like many other tribal groups in our country they are mostly dependent of, on the shifting culti- cultivation which is also known as the slash and bur- burn cultivation and the common name for slash and burn agriculture or cultivation is jhum cultivation however the kons call this as dongar chhas or podu chhas right so these are the traditional name of slash and burn ag- agriculture which are used by the by kutia kond tribe the major crops which are cultivated during the system uh, during the shifting cultivation system they are the millets such as ragi kosala kangu with arhar as an intercrop all right now let us talk about uh, a little about this barlang yatra now basically barlang yatra it is a traditional annual festival of the tribe annual festival of the tribe in the kandhamal district of urissa and during this festival the community especially the women they worship and they exchange what seeds in and they sing celebrate uh, celebratory songs and they dance at the village so basically barlang yatra is a sort of a traditional festival the next news of the day is about the international electronic commission now recently india has won the presidency presidency of the uh, of this uh, the vice presidency of strategic management board of international electro technical commission for the year 2023 to 2025 term right now let's see what this international electronical commission is basically this is a or this is a non not for profit organization which was founded in the year 1906 in london it is the world's leading organization for the preparation and the publication of the international standards for all electrical electronic related technologies and these are known collectively as electro technology right it is a global not for profit membership organization that brings together approximately 173 countries and they coordinate the work of 20000 experts globally headquarter is in geneva switzerland the standardization management board which is an apex governing body of the inter- international electronical commission is responsible for all the technical policy matters right the next news of the day is about the tilting train now 
Indian Railway has planned to introduce tilting trains by the year 2026. Now let us see what these tilting trains are. Basically it is a technology that would enable the train to maneuver curves at increased speed that too on regular tracks just like motorcycle or a winding road. Now if you see sometimes what happens the tracks they have curves like this. So when when a train when a train passes through these curves there is a high possibility or in fact these are known as the high risk areas where there is a high probability of derailing of train derailing of train in order to prevent any hazardous situation or any accident these tilting trains would be introduced so that they so that they easily maneuver through these curves all right now one day bharat trains which are manufactured in india they will be equipped with this technology by 2025 which will improve their speed because we know that one day bharat are semi semi high speed train right in order to increase or enhance the efficiency of these speed uh, you know high speed train we need to have technology that not only ensures the high speed but also prevents any accident so tilting train technology pre would prevent accident around these curved areas which will improve their speed also currently some of the countries have these technologies uh, for example Italy, Portugal, Slovenia, Finland, Russia, the Czech Republic, the UK, Switzerland, China, Germany and Romania. So these are the some of the countries which uh, do have uh, the, this technology. Now let us talk about that how does it function. So in physics, in physics we study two types of forces. So when we talk of the angle, when we speak of the angular motion, so there is two kind of force that is applied on the body. The first is the centripetal force. Now centripetal force is it acts outwards right centripetal force it acts outwards and the centripetal force which acts you know inward and we have this uh, centrifugal force which is which pushes uh, outward. Alright so these are the two kinds of forces that are that are applied on the body which is ex which is experiencing angular motion right which is experiencing angular motion now when a train passes through the curve it experiences angular motion or angular momentum in order to ensure that this that the train or the object and with people inside it passes through the curve easily this centrifugal force is experienced right which pushes them outward the effect can cause the luggage inside to slide right and the seated passenger they will feel squashed and the standing uh, standing passengers they would lose balance these trains are designed to counteract the counteract the effect of of uh, you know effect by tilting the carriage towards the inside of the curve so that so as to compensate this gravitational force now what happen if there is a through this angular momentum if there is a force which is acting outward we need to have a force which acts inside so as to counterbalance the outwardly acting force and therefore when we establish a balance when we establish a balance now this balance would ensure that the train safely passes through the curve without derailing or without causing any uh, problematic experience to the people i mean the passenger inside right there can be various mechanism to neutralize this tilting force so it yeah, it would also it would also prevent any sort of motion uh, motion sickness that are experienced uh, by people when they travel through uh, when they travel to vehicle especially during the time especially during the time of tilting all right so this is the this is the technology which would be employed by indian railways by 2026 so not only uh, it would prevent uh, accidents but it would also enhance the quality of the experience of the passengers all right the next news of the day is about uh, about saras 3 this news has been taken from the hindu okay so the saras 3 is basically a radio telescope so why saras 3 radio telescope is in news first the saras 3 radio telescope has been built by raman research institute and it has it has provided clues to the nature of the universe first stars and galaxy so there have been lot of these lot of hypothesis which describes the which describes the birth of universe birth of universe and one of the famous 
famous thesis describing the birth of universe is the big bang thesis right big bang thesis when the when there was a when there was a mass called nebula and it exploded into different stars and galaxies etc etc now radio telescopes their main purpose or their main objective is to discover what had exactly happened at the time of the birth of the universe or when the first stars or galaxies were formed so radio telescopes tries to look into the past right and with the help of uh, with the help of gaining uh, knowledge about the past we try to predict about the future all right so the result from the saras 3 telescope they are the first time that radio observation of the average 21 cm line have been able to provide an insight into the properties of the earliest radio loud galaxies that are usually powered by supermassive black holes all right so radio galaxies radio by radio galaxies we mean which emits which emits radio frequency which emits radio frequency and these radio galaxies they are powered by supermassive black holes all right so these black holes they have this property of attracting everything towards them attracting everything towards them because they have they have high mass to volume ratio and the gravitational pull the gravitational pull of black hole is quite high right so these black holes they energize these radio galaxies and they emit radio frequency which are then detected by the saras 3 telescope which is a radio telescope now let us talk a little about the saras 3 radio uh, telescope it's a niche high risk high gain experimental effort of the institute The Saras 3 radio telescope it was aimed to design build and deploy in India precision radio telescope to detect extremely faint radio wave signals from the depth of time from our cosmic dawn that means when uh, you know at the time of beginning of the cosmology cosmology is basically the study of the of the cosmic nature of the universe but by by this i mean the time at which the at which uh, the time at which the universe began all right so this is uh, how it is being formed now let us talk a little about the radio waves basically radio waves they are the longest wave in the electromagnetic spectrum so they range from the length of a football to a large larger than our planet so their wavelength is high what is the wavelength it is the distance between the two waves of the of the light so this is what this is called as amplitude the height of the wave and this is called as this is called as lambda lambda donates the wavelength and this is nu and nu donates the frequency of the frequency of the wave all right frequency means the number of waves per second and wavelength is the distance between the two waves if we say that it is has the longest wavelength that means the distance between the two wavelength is high is large you know and when we say that the you know the voice is high pitched voice then we are actually talking here about not the frequency not the wavelength but the amplitude so high pitch voice they have higher amplitude right okay radio telescopes they generally connect uh, collect the weak radio light waves and it brings to a focus and amplify it and make it available for analysis so the radio waves that are collected by the rad, uh, by the radio telescopes from the universe they are very faint and they we have to amplify them so as to so as to have have the analysis they help study the naturally occurring radio light from the stars from galaxies from black holes and other astronomical objects the specially designed telescope which observes the longest wavelength of light ranging from 1 mm to over 10 meters long for comparison for comparison the visible light waves they are only a few hundred nanometers long and a nanometer is only 1 by 10000 the thickness of a piece of a paper in fact we don't usually refer to radio light by its wavelength but by its frequency that means the number of waves 
per second per unit of time and unit of time can be anything depending upon our calculation depending upon the uh, you know the calculation that we are doing in physics so depending upon that per unit of time would be the appropriate definition for the frequency number of waves per unit time that's what frequency is wavelength i have already described with the help of the diagram also now the next news of the day is about the blue bugging now what is this blue bugging now recently these cyber security experts they have noted that some of the apps they are they you know that let uh, which lets the user connect to another device with the help of the bluetooth they can easily be hacked by using this methodology called blue bugging so bug is basically uh, we know that it is um, something uh, that is you know without information of the user is planted in the device that's what the bug is and blue bugging means with the help of the bluetooth the news has been taken from the indian express now what is blue bugging basically it is a form of a hacking that lets the attacker access a device through its discoverable mode which is the default setting in most of the devices it was identified as early as the year 2004 now how it is established when a hacker tries to access an established connection with the help of the bluetooth with a particular device and it can happen even within a range of 10 meter right so how do we prevent it you know hacker it tries to gain access via bluetooth to the files and to the files and folders of the device and once the connection is established a bug a malware or a virus is planted and it can be used to record the telephonic conversations to captures um, to capture the screen and it can also access to the access the data um, data which is present in the device right how we can prevent it many of the people say that um, that you know turning on the turning off the bluetooth when it is not in use updating the system software that is one way and also limiting the use of the public wifi vpn can also be used as an additional security measure so these are the uh, these are some of the preventions which have been described by the cyber secure uh, cyber security experts all right so that's it for today thank you so much for watching tarun is if you want to download the pdf of this session you can go to the telegram link the description uh, will be uh, will be given uh, in the description box have a nice day